So wrapping up class. So what we went over uh, today was we went over the inside sectors, both the inward block and the outward block, and how these are combined together and how they can kind of interact with some additional tools. And then we also kind of went over some strategy for getting the king of all chokes, the sleeper hold. An important realization I had a, lo um, uh, a few years back is the realization of a sad truth that I believe many of us in the martial arts world have neglected. And that is the mere presence of a tap out while sparring does not necessarily mean that in an actual fight, we would have beaten them. Now, it seems like that's not true because, I mean, they gave up. And I suppose in the competitive sense, I would have won. In all the modern competitions, tapping out means you win or that person loses. However, if you think about self-defense, Movements that break and injure won't necessarily result in victory. For example, how many boxers have you seen? Well, you may not know. <laughs> Most boxers break their nose during a fight. And then they just keep fighting. That's literally a broken bone. Many fighters dislocate shoulders, football players blow out knees and hips and elbows, and then finish out their game. It is possible for someone to sustain a traumatic and even life-changing injury, but continue along the process of trying to hurt you because they are dedicated to the goal or they're medicated in some way that they don't know or care. But tools like the eye jab, tools like the sleeper hold, render fighting back, sometimes near impossible, if not impossible. In the case of the eye jab, its potency is not just in its devastatingly painful assault. It is the fact that you're literally robbing that person of their ability to see you. Blind men have a really hard time catching a running man. And so it's not just that I'm poking him in the eye. There's kind of this sense in the martial arts, like the martial sport world that like, well, fucking, of course you'd eye jab someone, but I'll just fucking kill you with my eyes closed. It's like, well, you might, but sure as fuck, if you can't see me, it's going to give me an easier time. And then sleeper hold by its very name must be the most potent of all tools because if they're not awake, Surely can't fight back. And so prioritizing your training for self-defense versus prioritizing your training for sparring is an important distinction to make when you are choosing what techniques you put your focus on. I am not saying that there's anything wrong with someone being an armbar specialist. Or You guys know uh, probably if I have any submission specialty, it's the Americana. I hit that from everywhere right i'm really good at hitting it um but i also acknowledge that the americana whereas it would end a fight against wesley because wesley has the sense to stop when his arm breaks i also know that the americana may just be a bump in the road to a much crazier individual but guillotine sleeper hold forearm choke eagle claw gi chokes eye jabs strikes through the throat these tools these tools are the tools that actually have a strong if not definite possibility of winning a fight not to mention these are tools that are not very size dependent because let's be blunt if you've not been bench pressed while trying to do an americana wait you will i've met people who i have them totally in position and they go because they're just that much bigger and stronger than me. I've never met someone who did that to a choke. I've never met someone who's just like, not once. It's always been that once I get in there, it's done for. Now, granted, I, I am not the weakest person on earth. So, you know, um, you know, maybe, maybe 
somebody much weaker than me, they could just peel it off. But I do know that once the choke is applied, there's next to nothing. They got like three to 10 seconds to beat you. <laughs> and then they're asleep. The eye jab for sure requires no strength because like I talk about the five-year-old who kicked my ass. Poking someone in the eye is so powerful. So spar using all the tools at your disposal. Seek to be a well-rounded, educated martial artist but also acknowledge that some tools are definitively better and more important, more important, I like that, more important than others. Chokes, eye jabs, strikes to the throat. These are the kings of self-defense and everything else plays second fiddle to those. So when you train, just always keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's what I got for you today. Um, Aaron, the first half of this class, I'm going to put on the Patreon so that you can uh, have access to that, okay? So uh, I will see you guys. Today's Friday, so I'll see you guys in two days, right? Cool, enjoy your day off. Bye-bye.